Welcome to part two of how to create dynamic job types on IBM Tivoli Workload Scheduler version 8.6. This is an outdated video presentation presented by myself, Neil Richards. This video will utilize the dynamic pool created in part one to create a database job definition. With the dynamic pool created, it is now time to create the database job definition. So I move to the portfolio and expand workload. Then I expand design and I click on create workload definitions. I accept the default engine name by clicking go. This brings up the workload designer. In the working list area, I click on new then job definition and I select database from the available definitions. In the general tab in the name text box I enter the name of my job definition which I will call DB2 tab data. For workstation, I click on the magnifying glass icon next to the workstation text box. This brings up the lookup workstation box. Under workstation type, I select dynamic pool and click the search button. Example pool is present in the results. I select example pool and click on the OK button. This populates the workstation text box with the name of my dynamic pool. Select the database tab. In the database management system section, predefined should already be selected. If you click on the DBMS drop-down box, you are presented with three database management systems, IBM DB2, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle DBMS. For my environment, I only have a DB2 DB, so I select IBM DB2. In the database name text box, I enter the name of the database. For my environment, the database I am interested in is called CAST. In the server text box, I enter the server where the database is hosted. In my environment, that is tws64.network.com. So I enter tws 64 network.com. In the port number text box, enter the port number that the database is listening on. In my environment, it is 50,000. Ignore the custom radio button. In the JDBC jar class path text box, I enter the path where the db2jcc.jar file is located. In my environment, it is located at forward slash opt, forward slash IBM, forward slash db2, forward slash v9.7, forward slash java. In the credentials section, I enter the username to access the database, in my case, db2inst1, and the correct password.
Then I click on the Test Connection button to verify that my job definition can connect to the database. A test connection message is displayed, indicating that the test was successful. I select the SQL tab and enter the following SQL statement. Select all from cast details. This is only a simple statement as this video is demonstrating how to make dynamic job types. Of course, you can make the SQL as elaborate as you like in your own environment. Now with the simple SQL statement complete, I save the new job definition object in the database. Then once that's saved, I then close the object. I can now close the workload designer. Now I need to verify whether the job works or not. So I navigate to the portfolio and expand submit. and then click on Submit Predefined Jobs. I accept the default engine name by clicking Go. Under the Job section, press the button next to the Job text box. Click the Search button. This will display all job definitions. In the results table, DB2 tab data is present. Select the row and click the OK button. In the alias text box, I enter an alias of DB2 tab data 1. I then click on the OK button to submit the job. A message is displayed on screen indicating that the job was submitted successfully. Click on OK to continue. To verify if the job was successful or not, from the portfolio, expand Monitor and click on Monitor Jobs. Click on All Jobs in Plan, Distributed, and accept the default engine by clicking on the OK button. The Job DB2 tab Data 1 is present, and it indicates that, that the workstation was Example Pool. The status of the job is successful, which means that the job completed as expected. To examine the job in more detail, tick the checkbox and click the job log button. The job log details for DB2 tab data 1 is displayed. At the top of the log is the job submission definition language, or JSDL. Near the bottom of the log details is the actual output of the SELECT statement. It also displays the actual dynamic agent that the job completed on. In this case, it was the dynamic agent on Dynamic 64. To conclude, the Dynamic Workload Broker examined the Dynamic Pool example pool. It compared resources of all the dynamic agents in the pool and dynamically assigned this job to the dynamic agent on Dynamic 64.
This is the end of part two of this presentation, how to create dynamic job types on IBM Tivoli Workload Scheduler version 8.6. Part three will conclude the presentation with a second dynamic job type, the file transfer job definition. This job type will use the dynamic agent workstation type rather than the dynamic pool workstation type. Thank you for watching part two of this presentation, brought to you by Neil Richards on behalf of Orb Data. If you have any questions or queries, please do not hesitate to contact me at my email address on the screen of neil.richards at orb-data.com.